Have you ever tried to have a conversation with somebody who's running past you? You see them coming, I want to talk to this person, and you start talking, and they're here, they're here, they're gone. So it's really difficult. Now imagine if they were running at eight kilometers per second. This is what satellite engineers do every day. We have these very, very fast passes over the ground where we have to get as much data down from the satellite as possible. This is important because we need this data, this communication data, this weather data, this science data, or else the satellite is nothing more than a shooting star. So with my research, I'm trying to simplify the conversation with the satellite. I'm trying to make it so we talk less to the satellite about mundane things, like, for example, where the satellite is located. Actually, it's not mundane. Satellite location is a very important thing, but it's an important thing that satellites can now figure out for themselves. The location is important because for them to be using their weather, their communication, or their science payloads, they need to know where they are so they can know what they're looking at. So using, or on the Earth, if we want to know where we are, the standard thing is we pull out our cell phone and we say, hey, GPS, where am I? Now, GPS signals actually come from satellites. Very cool. And these are satellites that are higher up than many in their orbits. So if you're a satellite that's close to the Earth, like, say, the International Space Station, or the Hubble Space Telescope, or the shuttle, you actually can use GPS signals and figure out where you are. So great. I mean, why would I be here talking to you? OK, it doesn't, it's not always that easy. Canada wants to launch a new satellite called the Polar Communication and Weather Satellite. It's going to provide communication and weather to the pole. OK, not a good title, better name, but explanatory. To do this, it's going to go on a new orbit that hangs over the North Pole for a very long time, which is good for the comms and the weather. But it's bad because this is the region where we need to know its position, and this is the region where we don't have GPS signals. So what we do is we use math and we use physics. And we say, OK, we know how fast the satellite's going. What kind of forces are acting on it? What's pushing it around? Is the sun tugging on it? Is the moon tugging on it? Is it getting dragged from the atmosphere? And so we use all of these mathematical models in the top part of the orbit. And we have measurements in the bottom part of the orbit. And so the models and the measurement, we fuse them together. And that's called filtering, which is a different use of the word filtering. But that's what we call it, sorry. OK, so models and measurements fused is called a filter. And so the beauty of this approach is that we use the known locations in the bottom to predict the unknown locations in the top. This means that the science and weather and communications payloads are more effective in the region over the Arctic, which is of concern to us. This makes the satellite figure out where it is without us telling, simplifies the conversation, and you get to talk to the runner as he flies past you. Thank you and have a great day.